Injectable weight loss medications such as Ozempic, Wagovi, and Majero have exploded in popularity with celebrities praising their effects. But are they safe? Are they healthy? Are they for you? And most importantly, what are the long-term effects? We'll be talking about all of that today on Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. I am so pleased to welcome nutritionist with NutriMed Metabolic and Lifestyle Center in Icarver Township, Allison Stripmatter. Thanks so much for being with me, Allison. So let's start with what these drugs actually are. They're known as semi-glutide or GLP-1 agonists. What are they and how do they work? So these GLP-1s and GLP-1 GIP combination drugs are peptide hormones that are already made in the gut bacteria. And it's in response to when we're eating food, typically something with glucose, but also when we're eating protein and fat, but more so from glucose and carbs. So how do the drugs actually work? So they help to decrease the appetite by slowing down gastric emptying. So food is staying in the gastrointestinal system longer, um, which makes us feel fuller longer. And it suppresses a hormone called glucagon in the pancreas, which raises up blood sugar. Um, And it helps produce a little bit more insulin, which helps to decrease sugar from the blood and help carry that blood sugar elsewhere. So from the blood to the brain or the muscles or to the eyes, for example. So originally these types of drugs, this is the newest iteration semi-glutides, but this type of drug was created maybe 20 years ago. People were using it for diabetes, right? Right, exactly. And what were they, what were the results of it? So people were really reversing or at least decreasing the effects of diabetes on their bodies very effectively. It hasn't been until a little bit more recently, I'd say that these drugs are now being used more for weight loss purposes. Yes. And it's a little frightening because I'm seeing these ads now for telehealth being able to get ozempic like drugs you know just a weekly injection and you lose weight and it makes it seem so easy almost like a miracle drug and i don't in my background you know weight training and and working out and trying to eat healthy it seems a little bit like too good to be true so talk to us about that is it is it safe it it is effective people do lose weight but it may not be the right type of weight that's a great point weight loss and fat loss two big different things. And when there's these drastic losses in weight so quickly, I always look at what are people actually doing? What are they eating? What is their lifestyle like? And if this drug is just helping them to, hey, I feel fuller longer and I'm just not eating a lot. Therefore, I'm losing a lot of weight very rapidly. The first thing that comes to my mind is muscle loss. The drug doesn't cause you to lose muscle, but such drastic reductions in caloric intake does. So that's where my big concern is. If we lose our muscle, our metabolism slows down. And then do people become basically a slave to these drugs? They could. And when we know when we lose muscle, it really affects our metabolism because muscle helps to sort of rev up our metabolism. So when we're losing muscle, we're changing our whole metabolic system. And so then people become dependent on it and almost feel as if they need to stay on it for life. And and nobody wants to be on a drug for life. So I know that uh, in your center at NutriaMed, uh, you're very responsible with this because you work for a doctor there, Dr. Samar Boucher, who's fabulous, an endocrinologist there, mm-hmm. who's very diligent about making sure people do this with lifestyle changes because we know there is an obesity epidemic in our country. Almost 80% of our population is either overweight or obese, which is unbelievable. So there are mm-hmm. so many you know, negative Uh, outcomes of being obese, you know, so many problems associated with that. So I guess you need to weigh, you know, whether this drug is going to be more effective or help more helpful than being overweight or being obese. So you also combine this with lifestyle changes. So talk to us about that and why that's so important. Yes. So where I come in is obviously on the nutrition end of things. I don't administer these drugs. Dr. Bershay and our nurse practitioner, Lizzie and Shari, they're responsible for that side of things. And they are responsible. They are making sure people are following through on the lifestyle portions as well. 
And what I'm focusing on is, are we eating enough? Like really eating enough, not just feeling full, but are we eating enough food or are we down to 600 calories a day? Are we moving? Are we getting, you know, seven to 12,000 steps a day? Are we actually active? And with diet, are we getting enough protein specifically to prevent muscle wasting? Because again, these drugs have been on the news kind of blamed for, oh, these are causing muscle wasting issues. The GLP-1 hormone, it does not cause muscle wasting. Like I said, it's really that like drastic decrease in caloric intake and drastic decrease of protein intake. And protein is the macronutrient that's causing us to feel fullest the longest. So when people are already so full so fast, most of the time, the last thing they want to have is more protein rich foods, causing them to feel even more stuffed. Do you people... work with them to try to eat more protein first? Absolutely. Yeah. And you just hit the nail on the head, Robin, with saying first, because there were some studies done 2019, 2020, and there were several more done, but these two specific studies talked about meal order. So we have proteins, we have fats, we have carbohydrates, and the order in which those macronutrients are eaten in a meal really affected people's postprandial or post eating blood sugar numbers and the amounts of GLP-1 that was produced in the gut. And people that had those non-starchy vegetables and protein first in the meal and saved the starchier foods like rice, potatoes, peas, et cetera, save those for the end. They had higher levels of GLP-1, which was good, and lower levels of blood sugar. That's incredible. So interesting. That's a really yeah. interesting study. You know, mm -hmm. but, uh, how do you get people when they're feeling so full being on these medications to, to really have enough calories? Because people, really the mechanism by which this works is people eating less. If we could just have people eat less to begin with, people would, would need these medications. But what it does is it makes you feel full and you don't, you don't want to eat. But how do you get people to eat healthier foods? Because less of junk food is still junk food. And that's not really where we want to be. We want to try to change people's health in the long run. Mm -hmm. To be honest, it's really hard. And I often tell people this is going to be super challenging, but if you want to avoid long-term metabolic damage and long-term muscle wasting issues, you're going to have to grin and bear it and force yourself to get on a schedule of eating enough protein and eating, even if it's smaller meals, eating then more often in a way that you don't feel sick, but it's not often very comfortable for people. I could see that. But when somebody is obese or overweight, I mean, they're at greater risk for diabetes, heart disease, can't, I mean, there's a million issues that comes along with that. So if they're looking at, you know, weighing the, the benefits and the downsides of this, they're thinking to themselves, well, if I could at least get a jump start and, and lose the weight and start to feel a little confident about that, maybe then I can continue on. I mean, are you seeing that mm -hmm. in some of your patients there? Absolutely. And some people really do do it well. And I, I guess I could say they do it ethically for themselves. They're looking out for their long-term health. They're just trying to kind of get over a difficult hump in their health journey. And what I try to remind people that sometimes getting enough protein isn't as hard as they might think. So if even they got three ounces of protein three times a day, they're getting almost 100 grams of protein. And if they could just space it out in several hour increments, it's doable. It just takes some planning ahead of time. What are the best sources of protein if you are on these type of injectables? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great question. So for sure, complete protein sources. And the complete just means we, it has all nine of the essential amino acids. And essential means it's amino acids that the body doesn't make itself. It needs to get from food sources. And this would be chicken, turkey, fish, meat, dairy sources. Um, those usually it's coming from an animal source. Also, you can get a complete protein from tofu. I recommend with that getting a non-GMO and organic source. So it's the highest quality for the system. 
but definitely getting those complete protein sources is really helpful because the incomplete protein sources are often coming from higher carb foods like grains, certain vegetables, even starchy vegetables, nuts, seeds, which are a little bit higher in fat. So also making people feel fuller faster and they're more fat foods than they are high protein foods. So getting those complete protein sources is important. How important is tracking? Do you ask your patients to track their food as they're going through all of this? Yeah. So if they're on a GLP-1 or a GLP-1 GIP, it is important because most of the time, those signals of feeling full or feeling hungry, they're not exactly what they were before. They're being affected. So they might feel like I'm eating enough. I'm eating to the point of I'm full. I'm getting enough. And then when we actually go back and track several days worth of food, it's 700 calories. So tracking for some people is a blast. They love the data of it and other people, not so much, but if on these um, injectables, I think it's really, really important to track at least three solid days to get some starting data to say, Hey, what's actually coming in? What is my body telling me is enough? versus reality, 700 calories isn't enough for a grown adult to be taking in, right? So at least to get some starting data, it is essential. So we can see what are we getting in? What is your body telling you is enough versus, hey, what do you actually need to get in to nourish your body to actually get enough in and then make some changes, even if they're not always the most comfortable, but for the benefit of long-term health. Sure. And I think you had mentioned to me one time that even dietitians and nutritionists don't always estimate correctly without tracking. They think they, they eat less than they actually eat. Is that correct? Absolutely. <laughs> so fascinating. You might think like, oh, dietitians, nutritionists, we have an edge. We have a real corner on this. But side by side, there was a very close um, to just someone that's in a completely different um profession, the estimates were off in both categories. So it's really important to get a food scale, weigh your food, especially the proteins to say, Hey, am I actually getting that three or four ounces at a time? <laughs> Instead of just relying on, I'm pretty sure because <laughs> right. we're wrong all the time too. <laughs> That's actually really funny. So if you guys are wrong, we are really wrong, you know, but mm -hmm. you know, it's funny because Food obviously is essential to live, but it's not only essential to live, it's essential to thrive. And it really makes a difference in our longevity, how we look, how we feel, everything. And I just find that for some reason, we don't seem to put enough emphasis on it. I mean, people know that it affects their health, but it's sort of like one of those things like I'll get to it or I'll be there. It's one of these days I'm going to go on a diet. It's sort of like, it seems like it's a short term thing. For so many people and it's mm. actually not it's actually something that you really need to think about changing your whole lifestyle and that's difficult because we think about the food that is around us our kids even in the cafeterias and the foods that people bring into their homes and the packaged goods for convenience many times oftentimes because it's more affordable and sure. we're just surrounded with this and i just find that you know, if we just made those simple changes, probably so many people wouldn't need Ozempic in the long run. What a great point. If we could really just change the food quality and take out some of these, I guess we call them food, but it's like food-like products, things that have been altered so heavily. Yes. And a lot of just like, it's they're so highly processed. It's like, what is our body having to figure out? What's real in here? what is actually from nature and what has been just drastically altered to even create more hyperpalatability foods that you just feel like you can't stop eating things like Doritos or Oreos, where you're like, man, I thought I had self-control, but before I knew it, a tube of Pringles was gone or, you know, I didn't have three <laughs> Oreos. I had 25 or whatever it is, you know, or sugar. Putting, I mean, I they say sugar uh, is so addictive, almost like, like a drug, like cocaine. And, and sugar, I feel like is really misunderstood because we need good carbohydrate sources. We just don't need these really junked out food sources, high fructose corn syrup, a lot of just white sugar in our, in our foods, just to make them 
more appetizing for people, harder to stop eating. Right. And, um, but yes, if we could just get more, the manufacturers want us, you know, it's sort of like (laughs) they have to sell it. They want us to eat more of it. And it's, it's really a, a vicious cycle once you get into that. And it worries me a little bit about these injectable weight loss drugs, because I'm worried that people will still eat that type of food, maybe not as much of it, but they're not getting the nutrients they need. And, and that's, you know, less of a bad thing is still a bad thing. And that's why I think it's so important to do something like this responsibly with a nutritionist or a dietitian to make sure that you are doing it correctly because I think it's being abused. I really do. I'm sure it is being abused. So a lot of money to be made out there. Whenever there's money to be made in anything, there's always going to be abuse. Let's face it. Absolutely. And there's both sides, you know, some people are doing this to save their lives and they're on a plethora of other medications already. And doing this one thing is helping them come off a lot of other things And really, I believe it could be saving their lives. And then on the other hand, there's people that are truly abusing it, like you're saying. And um, I think that group over here is really giving it a bad name for what it could be or in a life-saving way. Yes, absolutely. They're saying that it could be the most profitable drug ever made by pharmaceutical companies. And that is that's incredible to me. So when you think about that, you know that there will be, you know, someone t- abusing it in some way. But, you know, that we're trying to say buyer beware. We're trying to get the message out to someone who might be thinking about this, if they might need it, to do it responsibly. And let's talk about the fitness element that goes along with this. I know you have, I really love NutriMed for the fact that, you know, you, you it's a lifestyle center. You're helping people change their There are eating habits, you have uh, cooking classes there, the nutrition Mm -hmm. counseling, and also fitness classes for people, and especially those who might have some issues with their weight or some other health issues, you really tailor the classes to their needs. So how important is fitness when you're on these uh, GLP-1s? I love that you brought that up. Um, It's huge. Like you mentioned before, muscle and metabolism, it's, it's like right there. So if people are doing, taking these injections and they want to change their lifestyle, activity is everything, specifically strength training, really strength training to stimulate muscle tissue growth. Because if they can do that, they're going to stimulate that metabolism to come up and look out for themselves again in the long term. And um, really save themselves from having to be on something like this forever. Unless they really need it, let's say again, for those diabetic purposes, but people that are using it for other reasons, like if you don't want to be on it forever, the lifestyle has got to change. Strength training is huge. Yes. But, you know, some people might say, who cares if I'm on it forever? I'm skinny now (laughs) and I don't want to work out and I don't really want to have to change my diet. And to me, that's where the problem comes in. That's the danger of all of this, the the lifestyle changes have to be in conjunction with these type of medications. And, you know, there are people that, that really just don't ever want to work out, especially if you are overweight and you have other issues. I mean, that, I know that's difficult and that's why you walk them through it step-by-step step there. Absolutely. And the first step, as cliche as it is, the first step is the hardest. If people can commit to one day a week, of even some upper body exercise, let's say they have joint problems, knee or hips, it's difficult or painful to get moving, but they can do some chair exercise. They can start lifting weights, upper body. Uh, And then, you know, two months down the road, hey, maybe we can start adding in some other weight bearing exercises for the lower body. But yeah, we'll definitely tailor everything to people's needs. It's important to just meet yourself where you're at And you can progress from there, but one step at a time. I know everybody says that, but it's so true. The getting started is the hardest part. And once you're, once you're in motion though, it's easier to stay in motion. I always say that. I say the hardest part is just getting your sneakers on, just get your sneakers on, get started. And I know it is difficult for people who maybe have never done it or got away from the practice of fitness, but I've been doing it my whole life. And I, I do have to say there is really nothing 
nothing like it. I mean, it's, it's the closest thing we have to the fountain of youth. I say it all the time. And I know some people are like, oh, I just don't want to do it. It's not, it doesn't take up your whole day. And there are things in life that even if you don't love it, you still have to do it. And it yeah. really will benefit you in the long run. And they're even talking now about depression and mental health issues related to fitness. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going a little off topic here, but it, it all comes back to you know, the person making the choice, someone making the choice to make changes in their life. And that's sort of my whole mantra. Everything I've been doing in my in my entire life has been about that. You know, people making the choice to change their lives. And as you said, step by step, a journey of a thousand miles be, begins with a, the first step. And that's something that I think you really talk about there. And I'm so glad to hear it. And talk to me about some of the results you've seen with your patients. So people on these GLP ones, GIPs, they are really losing a lot of weight. Their blood sugar is coming down. Their A1C is coming down, having a lot more energy. Um, if they're doing it right, they're able to keep that weight off if they come off these medications. And I think just the education part is so important because if you go on these injections and you're not educated on, hey, you're going to lose your appetite. You're going to greatly decrease your appetite at, at the very minimum. And then they're losing a lot of weight really fast. They're excited about it. And then if they come off of it, they don't realize that, hey, if they lost so much weight so fast, undoubtedly they have really downregulated their metabolism with muscle loss. Then they are gaining the weight plus more back. So it's, there's two camps. If you're doing it right, it can be fantastic. And the long-term results um, can really be long lasting. And if they're not educated properly or not really following through on what they know they need to do, the results long-term can be really devastating. Absolutely. And that you make such an important point about that. And I'm so glad that you're bringing that out because it has to be done the right way. You need to change your lifestyle along with it. This is a tool. This is not the only thing. Like it's a sort of a kickstart, a jumpstart. They lose some weight. They right. lose hopefully the weight that they need to lose. And then they maintain that weight loss without having to still be on the medications because they have now learned about living a healthier lifestyle. They've incorporated some fitness. Maybe it'd be easier for them to get fitness into their life because now they've lost some weight. So all of that mm -hmm. sort of works together. And I'm really glad that we're addressing this because people are just looking this, at, looking at this as a quick fix. Our society's, you know, pop a pill, get an injection. That's it. It's easy. But, you know, just like everything else, there's no free pass. There's no free lunch with this, so to speak. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no free lunch. So, and so there's true. People, people are interested in talking with you either online or in person at NutriMed, where can they reach you? They can call us at 609-415-2888, or they can go to NutriMed.com and they can book an appointment with us online. Really appreciate you being with me today. Thank you so much, Robin. It's been my pleasure. It's my pleasure too. Thank you, Allison Stripmatter, nutritionist with Nutria Med Metabolic and Lifestyle Center in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. And thank you for being with me today for Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. Please give me a review and subscribe so you can stay up to date on my most recent episode. Until I see you next time, keep living well.